Hello, in this video, I'm going to call it part three, principal components, uh, explained variance. And as a quick reminder, um, here we have uh, variables, x1, x2, you know, with some covariance matrix, you know, the variance associated with it. And if we were to plot the data, it looks like this. And then in some direction, you know, there's maximum variance associated with the data. And then that direction becomes the first principal component. And that's parts one and two kind of describe that process. And since it's two dimensions, this Y2 is determined because there's only one possible way to be orthogonal to Y1. And we also learned that the variance associated with the first principal component, so if you map this down, that variance is lambda 1, the first eigenvalue of the uh, covariance matrix. And if we were to map this variance down onto Y2, then that variance is, is, is lambda 2. Now, um, so, so the sum of the lambdas is the total variance of this, the data. Um, and as a reminder, you know, the data is here. If we rotate the axis, the data doesn't change, right? If we use all the principal components. And so um, w when we're, div what's next is we're going to show that the variance of the sum of this variance is equal to the sum of this variance. So, so let's let x be a random vector, p dimensions, so it's like p random variables, and with a variance covariance matrix sigma, let y1 through yp be the principal components of this uh, variant covariance matrix. Then the sum of the x's, or the sum of the variance of the x's is equal to the sum of the variance of the principal components. That's what we're going to prove here. So the proof is this. So we have uh, tuples here, lambda 1, E1 through lambda P, EP. Those are the eigenvalue vector pairs of the sigma matrix, the variance covariance matrix. Now with the ordered eigenvalue, so we let lambda 1 be the largest, lambda P be the smallest. So then we let lambda or y1 be the first principal component, and it's derived from the first eigenvector and then our x variable. Then the pth principal component derived like this. So those are the principal components. Now notice that the trace of the uh, variance covariance matrix, so the trace means add up the diagonals, which means we're adding up the variances. Right, which is what this is. So it's the variance of the x's, the sum. So this trace is. But also note by theorem one that the sum of the variances of yi's is the sum of the lambdas because the variance of yi is is lambda i. So the sum of these variances is the sum of the lambdas. Um, by the spectral decomposition theorem, we can decompose our variance covariance matrix into the product of these three matrices, P, lambda, P transpose, where P is orthogonal and lambda is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues down the diagonal. And actually the uh, columns here are the uh, eigenvectors. So note that the trace of lambda, so remember this is diagonal with the eigenvalues, is the sum of the eigenvalues which is the sum of the variance of the yi's. So now if we look at, let's put all these pieces together. So if we have the sum of the variances of the x's, which we said was the trace of sigma, right? But sigma can be decomposed by the spectral decomposition like this. And one of the properties of trace, we can move these around in a smart way. You can't do it milly nilly. Um, so we, if we move the P to this back part, then that is the identity matrix. So we just get the trace of lambda. But the trace of lambda was the sum of the variances of yi's. And that's what we wanted to show, that the, variant, the sum of the variance of the x's is equal to the sum of the variance of the yi's. Okay. And that's the, that's the proof that those two... You know, the sum of these diagonal elements is the sum of these diagonal elements. 
So we call that the total population variance. So the sum of the uh, variance of the yi's is actually equal to the sum of the lambdas, which is you know y1 plus through yp. And so to find the proportion of total variance explained by the kth principal component is actually just this. So this lambda k is the variance of the kth principal component. So this ratio tells us the proportion of the variance explained or associated with the kth principal component is this. Okay? So, and, and as a note and a reminder that the lambdas are ordered. So lambda 1 contributes the most variance of the total variance. You know, lambda 2 contributes the second most and all the way down to lambda p. Alright? So this is the smallest. So what if one of, you know, since they decrease, so what if the last one or the last few are zero? What does that even mean? Okay, so let's look at the first page again as an example. So if we, here's our data. <clears throat> let's say lambda 2 is zero. What, that means that the second principal component's a constant. So these all have to be shoved down to a line. To, in order, so that way when you bring it down, it's a point, right? So then when you map this down to the first principal component, that actually explains all the variance associated with our data. And if this is very close to zero, so meaning maybe it's really close to the line but just off, then mapping it down, the first principal component, component explains a large, large portion of the total variance. And you can actually get rid of this, the, the second principal component. So you go from two variables to one, and it's just as good because it explains as you know almost all the variance associated with the data. Okay? So um, when it's zero, that means the variance of that the that principal component is zero. Right, but the the ith principal component is actually a linear or combination of our x's, so actually that implies that our data there's or we have linear dependent data, so um, one of those variables is actually can be derived from the other variables, and and in some cases, so if this is really close to zero, it means that one of the variables is highly, highly, highly correlated with some of the other variables. So the, the, what we do is we drop that principal component from our analysis. So we've actually just reduced our, the number of variables we're going to use in our analysis. We reduce it from the analysis, but don't ignore that the eigenvalue associated with this. And the reason is that the components of this eigenvector actually highlight what the linear dependencies are among the x's. So in most cases, the researcher knows that, you know, these two variables are highly correlated. And um, if you know that, then you're going to produce an eigenvalue that's really small anyway. And so you're probably not going to learn much from this. But you may not know that there may be other linear dependencies that you learn. So my point is don't ignore this. And actually, the next video, part four, we're going to talk about correlations and, and the importance of each of these components, but more on that in the next video. So um, the most that I've seen uh, principal components used is data reduction. Okay, you have p variables and you want to you want to reduce it down to, you know, two or three principal components that explains the other, you know, 10 variables, you know, so you're creating these linear combinations of the important things. Now, um, you, you may say, but what about cluster analysis? What about, you know, factor analysis? Yeah, there's other uses for principal components. I'm just saying my personal experience is that data reduction has been the primary reason that I've used principal components. And, and what you do is you start with P variables, X1 through XP. Then you drive the P principal components. And note that they're all uncorrelated, which actually is a nice feature in itself. So then you find the K 
such that the first K principal components accounts for a large portion of the variance. And I put 0.8 plus and and this is, you know, you get to pick what it is. And that depends upon what topic you're studying, you know, maybe the experience of the uh, statistician with the data. There's so many things, but you wanted a, you know, a large number in quotes, you know. And then you drop the last P minus K principle, com principle components, keeping the, the first K principle components in your analysis. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed that. The next video is going to, I'm going to deal with, I'm going to generically call it correlation. And I'll explain more of that in the next video. But hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video if you did and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.